welcome back to my channel. It's Andrea. I'm really excited about today's video because I am going to be sharing with you my thoughts on a recent beauty purchase that I made from Alma Beauty. I got their foundation. I got this highlight and contour stick a couple of lip glosses and the one that I was most excited for, this Black Magic Allure eyeshadow palette. So I'm going to be doing my makeup and talking about these products as I do my makeup. In the interest of saving time, I just went ahead and did my primer and concealer and stuff off camera because I don't have anything from the brand to talk about there. And just as a little side note, I cannot wait until I'm done with this e.l.f. camo concealer because as you can see, it is way, way too light for me. But I'm so close to being done, I just want to finish it. So, so this is the Say What Foundation. I am in the shade Fair Lady T3C. This is $39, so it's a little bit pricey, but it's pretty comparable to high-end foundations that you might find at Sephora or Ulta. I, the reason I got this was because all of my foundations are too light right now. Like I keep having a hard time shade matching because even though summer hasn't even technically started, I've been outside a lot and I'm getting tan and everything is too light. So I wanted to try something that hopefully would be my correct summer shade. And this is pretty close. I may even have been able to get away with a shade one darker, which would have bumped me up into a next color category. So the way that Alma Beauty has their foundations categorized is they call them skinkins. So there's six different categories and each category is a different like shade range. And then you have the warm, neutral, cool, shades in that range. So there is White Pearl, which is the lightest, Fair Lady, which is the next one, which is the shade range that I got my foundation in, Honey Honey, Bronze Venus, Brown Sugar, and Black Pearl. And what's really cool about their foundation is there's different formulations for each one of those skin ranges. So for example, the Fair Lady the main concern for this skin type group is premature aging. So this foundation is made with, and I am, Aglianico grape extract. It helps to stimulate collagen production and improves cell detoxification. So just to give you a little rundown, the white pearl concerns are hypersensitivity and redness, and they have microalgae extracts to reduce inflammation and promote natural regeneration. Honey Honey, uh, their concern is also premature aging, but they have a different ingredient from the Fair Lady Foundation. Their extract is a rose hybrid extract for elastin induction and protection from inflammation and free radicals. Bronze Venus, the concern is, well, the most common concern is mild hyperpigmentation. And that one is formulated with white tea extract to protect skin, reduce inflammation, and detoxify. Brown sugar, main concern is hyperpigmentation. So that's contained woolly thistle extract, which reduces inflammation, minimizes pores, and reduces sebum production. It's also known to control and regulate pigmentation-related genes. And then black pearl, the concern is dullness, and that one includes tomato extract to brighten dull skin and protect from pollution and free radicals. So I thought that was really cool that it's not a one foundation formula fits all. It's if you're in this shade group, this is probably your most common concern. And it also even breaks it down by skin type. I didn't put that in my notes, but for example, I think the Fair Lady skin type was more dry combo skin. 
And then, you know, whether you have normal oily, the most common skin type for each one. So I thought that was really cool. It's a soft matte foundation. It's supposed to mimic your skin. So I still have the box, just I saved it for the video just in case I needed it. But it's a soft matte hydrating foundation. So I've worn it a couple times so far and I did it with a sponge and with a brush and I really think it looks best with a brush. So that's what I'm going to do today. Now this, when I first used it, I was like, okay, like look at how liquidy that is. I mean, that doesn't look like it's going to do anything, but it covers really well. Like the first couple times I've used it, I actually used two pumps, which I think might even have been too much. So I'm going to start with one today and see. And this is a buildable formula. So if you want a lighter, more medium coverage, you use one layer. And then if you want a heavier, more full coverage, you can layer it on top of each other. But especially since I'm actually going to work today and I'm going to be needing to wear a mask, I don't want to have a heavy, heavy layer of foundation. And honestly, I feel like a medium layer is all that my skin really needs. I'm not a huge full coverage person. I mean, I like it to look like I have actual skin, not like I have a mask on, so. And I will note, and this is not anything against the foundation because I have this problem with every foundation covering my nose. It's just my nose just doesn't like to have foundation. It always looks streaky no matter what I do. So let's see if I can get the lighting isn't going to be the greatest, but you can see it's a pretty good medium. I mean, that was one pump and that's a pretty nice coverage. So I'm happy with that. So in the Fair Lady shade range, this is the like deepest shade. So like I was saying, I probably, as summer goes on, I probably would have been able to get away with like the lightest shade in the Honey Honey, but I've just... I'm not going to buy another foundation right now. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to set my face besides my under eye and maybe my nose. Cause like I said, I'm going to have to be wearing a mask today and I don't want to get a ton. Like my nose is where things tend to rub off anyway, but this foundation also, since it's a matte, it doesn't really need to be set. So I'm just gonna do my nose real quick and that will be it. Okay, the next thing I have, I bought this, it's a double take sculpt and strobe stick and they also have these in each of the shade categories. I don't know what you call it. So there's the contour side and the highlight side. Now, when I got this and I took it out, I thought this was going to be like, look at how dark that looks, but it blends out so nicely. You have to work with it a little bit. You see how nice that blended out? Like, this stick 
is originally $40, but it's on sale on the website for $15, which is why I picked it up. Like, I, I do not need any more bronzers or highlighters. But I was, since it was on sale, I was kind of intrigued because I don't own any cream bronzers. So I wanted to try it. Now, I'm not saying this product is bad in any way because it's not. I actually really like it and I'm perfectly happy paying $15 or even $20 for it. I don't know that I would pay 40 for it. But at the same time, I also don't know. I mean, it doesn't look like there's a ton of product in here. Does it say? There's five grams of highlighter and six grams of the bronzer. So I guess I would have to see how long it actually takes me to use something like this up before I would decide if I would pay full price because that is a little, in my opinion, for myself. I know I don't want to I don't want it to seem like I'm saying like I think the price is unfair or whatever. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying there are things that I'm more willing to pay more money for and $40 for a bronzer and highlighting stick is not really where I want to be spending 40 bucks, but that doesn't mean it's not good quality. So what I'm going to do with the highlighter part is I'm just going to tap it out and then because this is a nice, well, that, I guess that's the other reason why I probably wouldn't pay $40 for this is because while the highlighter is nice, it is way too subtle for my liking right now. So what I'm going to do is actually this. I bought a new highlighter from Juvia's Place. This is the Tribe Highlighter Volume 3. It looks like that. So I, what I do is I put the cream on first and then I go over it with my Juvia's Place highlighter just to see. That's what I'm talking about. I like a glowy cheek lately. And if you're really into more subtle highlighters, then those, the stick will probably be a good option, but I've been using it as a base for other highlighters because I like it to pop a little more. Then they don't, I don't believe they have any blushes. They do have a couple of bronzers, like powder bronzers, but I don't recall seeing any blushes on the website. So I'm just gonna use my ColourPop Kissin' a Frog Powder Blush. This is in my monochromatic project pan for June. That's looking real pretty. Okay, I'm going to finish the face off with, why can I not find anything else right here? I'm gonna finish my face off with my powder, my setting spray, I'm gonna do my brows off camera and then I'll jump back with the Allure eyeshadow palette. Okay, so my brows are done. I have my eyeshadow primer on. So now it's time to get into the palette. And the packaging is amazing. I love it. So this is what it looks like on the inside. And I'm sure you will notice that it bears a passing resemblance to the subculture. So I will throw a picture up that I actually did swatches to find, to see how similar the palettes are. And obviously the biggest thing is the subculture only has three like shimmer metallic shades. While this one, the entire, this entire row is shimmer metallics. This entire row is matte. There's only really one shimmer dupe. This Allure shade is very, very close to electric from the subculture palette. But as you'll see in the photo, 
all of these mattes are pretty much dupes for matte shadows in the subculture. So I'm not upset that I have this. Because of everything going on with the Black Lives Matter movement and people feeling more empowered to speak out about how they're treated differently than their white counterparts. Um, I am no longer supporting Anastasia Beverly Hills. So, I mean, obviously I just got this palette. I've only used it like two or three times. It's, I'm not gonna throw it away or anything. I'm gonna use it, but it's nice to have a palette that is pretty comparable in terms of shade colors because this does have 14 shades, this only has 10, but every matte shade in here has a counterpart in the subculture. And I think that electric in the subculture is pretty much everyone's like favorite shade. And as I said, this shade Allure is pretty much a dupe for that shade. So if you were interested in subculture and then all this shady business came out and you still really like that color story, I do recommend picking this palette up. So I think today I'm going to use Enchantress and Allure just because I'm wearing my, my dress with lemons. I want to do something kind of yellowy. So I'm going to start with this shade Romantic in the crease. I've used each shadow in this palette at least once, so I have a fairly good idea of how they perform. I will say, I while I do recommend this palette, I mean, it's not perfect by any means. I feel like the metallics definitely pick up better on your finger, laid down on top of some glitter glue. When I did my arm swatches, I tried to brush and they, it just wasn't picking up well, but with a finger and glitter glue, it was, you'll see, it's beautiful. The only matte shade I had a bit of a problem with was this Lush shade. It was going on a little bit patchy, which I'm not too surprised at because it's a dark green matte shade. And the shade Enchantress, this yellow, metallic that I'm going to use. I did have a bit of fallout with that one, but it's nothing that would stop me from recommending this palette. It's nothing that would stop me from using this palette. It's just something to be aware of. So I am going to take that shade Lush. I'll show you two again. This dark green, and that's going to go in my outer crease. going to darken that up again at the end, but for right now, I'm just going to take my NYX glitter glue and stick that all over my lids so that I can lay down those metallic shades. And I will say I have not tried the metallic shades without a glitter glue on my eyes, so I'm not sure how they perform on their own, but I just like to be as shiny as possible, so... I started out with the glitter glue. So what I'm going to do first is take this Enchantress shade, this yellow shade. And these, the metallics feel like when you use your finger, they feel very dry. And actually, you know what? Because I did have a lot of fallout with this one last time. So even though I have the glitter glue on my eyes, I'm actually going to spray my finger a little bit just to try to help minimize that fallout. And I'm gonna, like, I wish the lighting was a little bit better in here, but. Like, hopefully you can see how intense that is over the glitter glue. So now I'm gonna do my other eye. 
wipe my finger off and now I'm get a little closer. Now I'm going to use this shade Allure and I'm going to do like the inner third of my eye. And I'm going to do the same thing with spritzing my finger with my setting spray. This has that like greeny iridescent kind of shift to it, which it's so pretty. I am going to take a smaller brush. Where is it? This is like an Eco Tools. This is actually a liner, like smudgy brush, but I like using it in my outer corners. I'm just going to take that Lush shade again and just deepen up the very outer corner just a little bit. Then I'm going to take whatever is left on it and just very lightly run it underneath because I don't want a super dark under eye, but I want to make sure that it's like kind of tied together. Just like barely there. That's all I want. And then I'm going to take my little pointy pencil brush and I'm going to go into Allure and just bring that shade into my inner corner. Okay, so I am going to do my eyeliner and mascara and then I'll come back for my lips because I did buy a few lip products from this brand as well and I'll be right back. Okay I'm back my liner and mascara is on and you think I would have been prepared for this part? No, I don't okay I bought two of these Boss Gloss Liquid Marble lip glosses. <laughs> um, this is the shade Class and this is the shade Ambition. I think I'm going to put class on. These are like a cross between a lip gloss and a lip stain. Like they're shiny, but they're not super duper shiny. And once they wear off a little, They do leave a really nice stain on the lips. I would definitely try out more shades of these. And I'm intrigued to try out their like regular lipsticks too, but they're like 24 bucks for a lipstick that's a little pricey for me for a lipstick right now. So maybe at another time when I also don't have like 100 lipsticks that I need to work through. But anyway, I do recommend the lip gloss. It's very nice. But this is my finished look with my new Alma Beauty products. I'm really happy that I picked this stuff up. I would definitely recommend everything that I got, you know, with the, the caveat of that highlighter bronzer stick of why I personally wouldn't buy it full price but if you have a different makeup aesthetic than I do maybe that's something that you'll be worth looking into I did I was looking at the website today they're still on sale for $15 I think they're at the on the Ulta website they're still 40 because obviously they're not they don't do the same sales at the same time but on the Alma Beauty website, they are $15 right now. I don't know how much longer that's going to last for. If you were interested in picking one up and trying it out, I say it's definitely worth at least the $15 to try it out. But 
I do want to try, I think it's the Carnival palette. The other, there's four, that's not four, there's four total eyeshadow palettes. There's obviously this one, the Allure, and then the Carnival is like a more colorful one, and then they have like a more brownie neutral one, and then a, a darker one with I think like a red and a dark blue, but it's still a little more neutral. So the only other one I'd be interested in picking up was the Carnival one. I may do that at some point, but I need to get some more pan in my eyeshadows first before I buy any more makeup. But I hope this was kind of informative. This was like, I think really my first brand review on my channel. So you'll have to let me know how I did if you need more information, if I talked way too much. I mean, I'll, I'll take everything into consideration and that doesn't mean I'll, I'll do it or listen to it, but I'll read it and think about it. So I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy and that includes mentally and physically healthy because I know we're in some really turbulent times right now, but hopefully this provided a little bit of an escape for you and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll talk to you later. Bye.